you said that you, at one, at one point, were prepared to remain a Christian oh, yes. for the rest of your life. That's right. That's right. W what was behind that aspect? Uh, I was prepared to because I didn't want to suffer. I saw what Jewish people suffered. Once I survived as a Christian, I decided to leave my... The, I didn't know that, that there, there are Jews who are... St I didn't know that there will be Jewish survivors altogether. I never expected. That's why I couldn't believe the fellow in Wildflecken who, point, who tried to convince me that he is Jewish. That was my, the, the reason to stay a Christian because I didn't think there are any Jewish survivors, knowing the concentration camp, what was, the, what was going on there, how could I expect a Jew to survive? But because, thanks to this, that I joined the Jewish people, out of curiosity, I presume it was, and out of hunger, because this is said that they have a lot of food, and he, and, and being young, always hungry, helped, you know? And no, especially I had the support of Yadja, my friend who also is Jewish, and he was, she was a very practical person. I would join the Jews without thinking much, joining them. But she already, being a practical person, said, they will help us get to the States. I'll have family there. I'll find them. They will put gold on us. They will do this. They will do that. We'll have a fabulous life. She was an extremely practical person. And it was beneficial for us to be with the Jewish people because when the world will hear the Jews survived, they will do the most fabulous things for us. That's what we expected. Naturally, it didn't uh, happen this way. But this was very important, I think. I can't think of any other uh, things. Well, how long were you uh, Christian, in quotation marks? Altogether? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was Christian since I escaped from the ghetto. It was from June the 2nd, 1942, till uh, till I uh, till I joined the dam, which was after the liberation. 45. It was 45. I was a Christian. So we are only talking about two, three years. Three years, but the three years were like ten years for somebody else, because in order to try and survive on Christian papers in Warsaw, I had to train myself to forget that I'm Jewish. I specially trained myself to such a degree that I said. When the Gestapo will catch me, and they will beat me, that blood will come out from my ears, from my nose, from my mouth, I will say I am not Jewish. I will say I am a Christian. If they will want me, but how they used to check, if they had, were suspicious and caught a girl, they thought she was Jewish, they would beat her and say, tell the Polish prayers. And I knew them by heart. I used to go to church as a Christian girl. I knew all the prayers by heart. I still have my prayer book right here. A Polish prayers. Oh, that's right. We, we, we're, we're talking about th this was your yeah, Christian my identity. my Christian identity. You see my prayers that somebody gave me during the Polish uprising. I should pray every day so I'll survive. A special prayer that's not included in the prayer book. And so on and so on. You know, so I, I used to I lived with a Polish family that they naturally they, they knew they I was Polish and that's it, you know. So at night in my room I would lie, I would put the blanket over myself and talk to myself for hours. Remember you are not Jewish. Remember you are Maria Janina Burczynska, because that was my identity. So that's how I trained myself. And it was very difficult to, to become Jewish again for me. A matter of fact, to such a degree that I forgot Yiddish. I forgot completely because uh, when I joined the Jewish people and I told them that my parents came from Vilno, so there was a Jewish soldier, an American Jewish soldier whose parents were from Vilno, and he spoke to the people there and suddenly they called me and said, there is an American soldier who wants to speak to you because his parents are from Vilna or something. And I met this guy, and he fell on me and started to talk Yiddish to me. And I wanted to say in Yiddish, it German came out. My Yiddish was, it was so submerged. submerged that I could not say a single word in Yiddish. You, for, you want to forget so much in order to survive, and you had to do so many things to survive. 
Or, when I lived with this Polish family, and naturally their son was a terrible anti-Semite, used to tell me stories when he worked for a um, Polish uh, sawmill. He worked for a sawmill. He was the director of a sawmill. And the Jewish people used to walk on their tiptoes because he knew I hated them. I used to hear stories all the time. And to such a degree that nobody, whoever even suspected that I'm Jewish, once I opened my mouth and spoke Polish, knew I couldn't be Jewish, because any Jew spoke with some kind of an intonation that they could recognize the Poles, you know, yeah. even when you spoke a good Polish. But there is always the Jewish intonation in it that I got rid of. Some Polish people worked on me, helped me to get rid of it. You know, the first people that helped me when I escaped from the ghetto with whom I stayed. I had this intonation. I had this intonation like everybody else. And uh, if they would only hear a, a bit, they would know I'm Jewish. I could be blonde with blue eyes and no matter what. But if I would speak Polish with this slight intonation, Jewish intonations, that could be my, a disaster, a death, really, sentence. So I spoke a pure Polish with a real pure Polish accent. So once a man said to me, you know, I suspect that you were Jewish. But once you open your mouth, I knew it couldn't be. You know, things like that. So I had really to work very hard on myself. 